All right, do we hear ESBL Boxing? And delighted to be joined by five foot eight and a half inches of Brandon Scott. Brandon, um, you're not five foot eight, though, are you? you what, what are you? Five foot eight and a half. I'm going to specify how important half an inch is. Not for my height reasons. Half, there's nothing wrong with half an inch, okay? Half an inch is a solid size. Um, there we are. So shout out to Box Rec there who need to update their records. Brandon, um, we're not in an arena. We're not at the O2. We're not in a stadium. We're in, um, we're in a social club in South Wales, in Swansea to be precise. Well, what's going on tonight? Well, this is our Premier ABC home show. Uh, it's the Penland Social Club. It's like a, it's like the home of Premier Boxing, man. Uh, you said it's not an arena, it's not a stadium, but uh, what I will say is this place will mean more to me than any arena ever will. This, like you said earlier, it's pure. This is... I seen a post on Facebook a while ago that said you can't box in a place like this, which was a, an arena, unless you box in a place like this. And it was more or less a place like this. And I've had loads of fights here. And this place, whenever I come in here, whether I'm boxing, whether I was boxing or not boxing, this place will always have a very special place in my heart. We talked about it a bit off camera, but when you come to a place like this, do you do you walk in here with a certain swagger? And I know you're a humble guy, but do you walk in here with a certain swagger, like I'm Brandon Scott, I'm a pro boxer, or does it make you feel like that kid again who's like, you know, you're back in a big place and stuff like that? I'm just a child, there's just everyone else in you. Also, I know all the young amateur boxers, I ran in the changing rooms, I'm rugby tackling all the kids. I'm not, I'm not betraying no big ego, uh, but no, I, st I still get nerves. Do you know, it's like almost a little excitement. It's like amateur boxing shows, in particular the social clubs, have a certain smell. It's like a smoke mixed with beer. I don't know. It, it just gets me excited. I'm like a bit almost a, a nostalgia, deja vu feeling. Like, oh my God. But like I said, th this, this place will mean more to me than what an arena filled with 80,000 people could ever mean. Because this is where I started. This is, this is where I've begun. This, this is me. And I'll, I'll always, I will always be the kid who came from social clubs like this. And, and, and you used to be that kid, and now you're here for those kids. What does it, and, and we talked about this before, they, I've seen kids come up to you and want to celebrate with you and be with you. You know every single kid who's boxed you tonight. Are you still a regular at the gym? Is it something you're like committed to doing? Is it just because you want to be there? Like, what's the, what's the motivation to be here on a, what, what night is it, a Thursday night? When rea in reality, you're a signed professional matchroom boxer and all that stuff. What's the motivation to be here tonight, really? Well, I love it. I love boxing. I, uh, nothing changes in my life, which I'm sure we'll speak about later. But I'm not fighting this year now, for, due to reasons we'll get on to. So my training still gets done, but I make sure I train earlier so I can come to this. I don't miss training to come to this. I train earlier so I can come to this, you know. This, 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 this amateur boxing has a special place in my heart because it's where I came from. And... To see the kids, the kids all run up to me and they're asking me for advice and I'm like, Jesus Christ, it was only a couple of years ago, I was, I was boxing you. Yeah? I was like, do you really want my advice? <laughs> I just tell them, hit him more than he hits you. Simple, duck and, duck and dodge. Yeah, basic, basic dodgeball reference uh, there. Um, Brandon, you just alluded to the fact you don't have a fight coming up. Um, there was rumours that you were fighting on the Joe Cordina card that was out in uh, Monaco and stuff like that. Is that not happening? Yeah, I was going to. Uh, I was off to Monte Carlo, baby, but if you've been following my career for a while, you know, you in particular know, I've suffered with a hand injury, a reoccurring hand injury that's been haunting me for a while now, and I've had to, I've had to fight through it to, to get to matchroom to do these things, but my last four fights, I have literally had one hand. So I've been to see a hand specialist, and he's confirmed that I do, I am in very well need of an operation. So he's rushed me into having an operation in two weeks' time, so after that, I will be back, wanking in full force, back punching full force. But my operation will be in two weeks, so on the 3rd of November, scheduled to fight on the 4th. So uh, I think he said I'll be good to fight six months from the operation. So I'm hoping maybe, ho I'm hoping it's going to land with the next Joe Cordina show in Cardiff. That would work out perfect. But my next fight won't be no earlier than autumn uh, of 2024, but I'll be back with full force of two hands because I'm entertaining outside the ring we all know that but I also feel like I can't really show people how good I am in a boxing ring with one hand I can show them how good I am I've got a, I'm good with my left hand but I, I know that people haven't seen how good I am yet and for me to show people how good I am I need both of my hands absolutely and you, you get you've answered a lot of the questions there so the surgery is obviously serious the layoff's going to be quite long when you're not now 
in fight camp. You obviously, you walk around at a very close to fight weight anyway. What, what are you doing to sort of tick over and stuff like that? Are you in the gym? Are you hitting pads? Or is it really like hands off? Well, it's supposed to be no hard contact. But I, I said before, I quit all my jobs so I could box full time. I now can't box. So if, if I can't train, my life is nothing. So I've worked around it. I've got a boxing gym in my house, which for my mental health, I'm very grateful for. I'm punching a lot of paddles. I'm doing a lot of running. I'm shadow boxing for an hour and a half a day. I'm, like I said, I'm doing my strength and conditioning. I'm doing everything I can that's not punching with my hand. But I, I've actually identified some big problems that have been holding me back other than my hand. So it's actually, I swear, it's actually given me a chance here to work on other things. So I know when I come back, not only am I going to have two hands, I'm going to have rectified loads of the problems I've had before the hand injury that are holding me back for all my amateur career. And for that, you'll have to wait and see for my next fight. Um, talking of next fights, is this a problem for you contractually? Because you're now signed to matchroom, you're a matchroom fighter, so therefore you're contractually obliged to fight, say, when you're asked to and when it's set up and so on. Does, is this a problem for you? Does this eat eight, ten months out of a two-year deal, or how does that work for you? No, it doesn't affect the contract. I'm very, I'm very grateful on the fact that um, the contract states that if I have an injury and I can prove it's an injury, then they'll overrun the contract. It's no problem at all. Where a problem would come is if I was just saying, no, I'm not fighting, I don't want to fight, then the problems would start to come, but I need an operation on my hand. There's nothing I can do to control that, so it just basically means the contract will overrun, and then we'll just pick up, pick, pick up from where we left off when the next fight is. So um, we, we talked hand injury, we talked upcoming fights. Let's talk slightly life outside the ring. Um, did you get Ebony Bridges' phone number? Is that still on the cards for you? I can't tell you that, do we? A gentleman never kisses and tells. A gentleman never kisses and tells. Yes, I did. <laughs> Brandon, also outside the ring, you've announced recently um, a new sponsorship deal. Is there something you can tell us about that? No. No? Nothing? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Well, first off, i got to put a massive shout out to my uh, my sponsorship team, Vote Boxing, and Dan Francis in particular. You big up, UG. Uh, but I am now sponsored by arguably the biggest brand in combat sports, which is Venom. But look, Venom's a massive brand, and they're sponsoring me, which I it's, it's almost like a dream come true for me. But I'm not one of these sell-out people. I'm not one of these people that's going to get sponsored by someone and then only ever show that brand. I mean... Do I think Venom's the best brand in the world? Yes. Do I think everyone should buy Venom? Absolutely. But am I going to go rubbing it in everyone's faces? Absolutely not, man. I think people who just go out of their way to show sponsors really gets on my nerves, you know? I think it should be kept subtly and just be humble about it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and just quickly, like we talked about the step up there from amateur boxing to pro boxing and stuff like that. With this other stuff that comes along now, the deal with Venom, the deal with Matchroom, the, the go into shows and trying to keep up that, that other side of things, we know you're a talker, right? Does any of that stuff drain you, you know, when you just, you just sometimes just want to be a boxer? Or does that, some of that stuff maybe give you a bit of life, a bit of energy as well? It drains me a lot. I'm, I may be like, now, but I just had two J2Os. I've got sugar flowing through my body. I'm, but... Do you know, I say to my father all the time, it's, do you know after a fight week, now that like, it's, I didn't have it on the small hall shows, but now, because I'm with Matchroom, I get, it's, it's a fight week now. There's a press conference, there's an open workout, there's interviews all the time, there's a day before weigh-in, there's just... I said to him, the most draining thing about it all is all the media work. I almost feel like the fight is not the, I don't say the easy bit, but it's the bit when I can go, thank, thank God. All I got, the, the, the release? Yeah, all I gotta do is box now, it's like, all the other work, say after the fight, I come back to the changing room and I'm like, ugh, I'm such an adrenaline dump and I've, I'm riddled with ADHD anyway, so the adrenaline dump for me is like, kaboof! <laughs> so, I get loads of adrenaline, I got adrenaline for this interview here, I get adrenaline all the time, but something I'm sure I'll learn to deal with more as my life goes on, but I'm, I'm going to have to get used to it. If I'm going to stay on the shows like this and I'm going to keep on doing the crazy stupid shit I'm doing, I think it's gonna have something I'm gonna have to get used to. But it's like boxing, isn't it? You know, we start we start off in shows like this, in the social clubs, and we end, I, my last fight was in the O2 Arena. It's, I couldn't just go from here to there, it's a gradual build up of the small hall shows, fighting in the CIA Arena, which is a lot bigger. But then I think if I just went to the O2 Arena, even though there was not a lot of people there, I had a lot of people watching me wanting me to lose, because in some people's eyes, I'm an asshole. <laughs> Can't really argue. <laughs> but it's, we learn to deal with it, you know. We've always nudged the camera. 
it's something we we build up on, you know, baby steps. We build one step at a time, one step, one punch, one round at a time. I come up with that. Yeah, totally original quote. I love that. Uh, we should get that into a film or something. I should copyright that. I should copyright that, shouldn't I? Um, as well, there's, you talk about it being a gradual build-up and there's steps to it and there's improvements and so on, but there has to be certain things from this smoky, beer-smelling hall to the main stage um, of pro boxing that, that you can't prepare for. What are the things that came at you in pro boxing that, do you know what, maybe I wasn't ready for this or maybe I don't enjoy it. What were the things that were the biggest challenge? Well, pardon me, it's, it's, the training's a lot different as a professional. I feel like I get beat up a lot more. Even when I'm sparring, and I don't, I win a spar easy. I'll wake up the next day and I'll feel the effect. I'm like, oh my God. It's like I feel so amateur boxing, man. I, I could spar 12 rounds as an amateur. I wake up the next day, fresh as daisy. I, I don't know, maybe it's a mental thing possibly. But I said to you earlier, to this day, the best feeling in terms of boxing I have ever had that nothing has ever come close to was winning the Welsh Novice Championships. I mean, in, you know, in comparison to some of the other things I did, it's nothing. But it was at that time, when I was just a little kid who'd never won anything before, and all of a sudden, I'm a champion or something. It may have been small, but it was like, I could go home, and where I came from, my very my bullied background, I was like, I'm a winner, I'm a, I'm a champion. I, it was like a sense of winning that I'd never had before. So, I'm not saying I'm, I'm used to winning, but it's like, it's, that, it's the first time, it's like losing your virginity, you know, man? It's like, after that, it's never quite the same, you know? <laughs> so this, this place, this place will always, like I said, have that feeling. And I think, going back to the question, I went a bit off topic there. The training's a bit different, but what I wasn't prepared for, early, early professional days, it wasn't so bad with hate. I had a few people calling me, knob, what are you doing, ha, ha, ha. But it was more just, no one's seen it, today. But I did the Joe Cordina card, and that was my first kind of, you know, steps into the, the public eye. I had a fair bit of hate, and I thought, Oh, this isn't nice, like, Jesus Christ, like, what are you being so mean to me for? But again, I was like, oh, it's not too bad, but it was when I did the Anthony Joshua card, because that was my first time in the mass public. People were out for my blood, especially for a first, the first few days. They were out for my blood, man. I was like, what? It was, it was Twitter. It's always Twitter. It was like people were just letting their anger on me. It was like someone who's had a bad day at work or someone just argued with their wife. And they're like, I'm so fucking angry. Like, where's Twitter? Where's that fucking Brandon Scott post? Stupid David Brent, cringy, stupid kid, fucking I'm like, whoa, chill, man. What have I done to you? Like, whoa, chill. So I wasn't prepared to that. And like I said, you like, on my Instagram, I get, I get death threats and everything. Like, I'm 20. I don't want that shit. So, but this is gonna sound so sad, but I've gotten used to it already. I've gotten used to all the shit. Because I also get a lot of messages with kids saying how much I'm helping them. But they're the messages that affect me the most because it's not someone. Again, it's not someone trying to make fun of me, it's someone who's coming to me needing help. I know then I've got like someone, not someone's life in my hand, but I'm like, right, okay, someone's coming to me for help, I have an obligation to try and help that person. They're the ones I, I really feel for. But the person called me David Brent. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a feeling there's quite a few people calling you David Brent. Um, and we won't dwell on that one, we'll get moving on from it. Um, Brandon, just a quick one on as you move forward and stuff like that, your career is now really taking off. And I know we always ask these sorts of questions, oh, what are you aiming for, blah, blah, blah. But with the hand injury and the layoff, when you come back, you're gonna be nearly 21, not far off 21. Yeah, and, and are you gonna be, are you starting to look then at, because you talked about that 21 age limit before and the British titles and so on. Is it, look, get me back in, get me ticking over for the first one, maybe a second tick over or something, and then we're in the title fights. Is it a slow burner still, or is it, I don't know how my hand's going to last? No, I, I know my hand's going to be solid after this operation, because they, this, this, this um, hand specialist, he operates on Freddie Roach's boxers, he's operated on Dalton Smith, he's, he's top range. He'll, he said to me, he'll be solid. But I am also man enough to admit sometimes, when I was younger, I was very eager. You know, I was too eager for my own good. I'm going to be a world champion one day. I take back nothing by what I said. One day I will be a world champion. I train too hard not to. I have full confidence because people need to understand that I shouldn't have even been a boxer. I was a fat, overweight kid with Tourette's syndrome. Who, me losing the weight was a big enough goal. Winning a fight was a tremendous goal. Becoming a professional boxer, wow, now I'm with Matchroom. People like, I keep saying to people, I'm going to do it. No one believes me. Then I'm starting to do it. 
and people are like damn he's starting to do it but I'm just saying I'm full confident in my ability I'm going to be a world champion one day but when I said I wanted to be a British champion at 21 I was full confident I could have made bantamweight I have grown unfortunately some areas not unfortunately <laughs> but I, don't, I can't make bantamweight anymore that, that's gone I can't make bantamweight without killing myself so before I go saying what I want to win by when, I have to find where I need to set my foundation. Whether it's at super bantamweight, whether it's at featherweight. I'm going to take these six months, focus on my boxing. Like I said earlier, I've got, I'm working on a few, very few things here that I'm so confident have been holding me back for years. I think when I learn these, I'm going to be a different level. And it's, I, I know I will. So I need to focus a bit more on the boxing and just let my boxing do the talking. I, I, I could say, I, I could say I'm going to be heavyweight world champion. I'm not going to. I'm never going to go heavyweight, but I could say it. I could say to you I'm going to be a world champion. I mean that when I say it. Unless I, unless I do, it means nothing. So I'm going to, I've got a lot of things going right now. I'm working very hard behind the scenes. I need to get my body fixed first. You know, no, one, no one's seen me at full capacity since my second fight, which was over a year ago. You know, my last four fights, I've had one hand. And people are starting, they're saying to me, without, again, without being cocky, oh, he's a good boxer, but he's still a dick. I'm like, well, you're still referring, I'm a good boxer. Wait till you move two hands. So I need, I need to get this right. I need to get this right. Patience, that sounds like a real uh, maturity that you bring into yourself and it's being put into you as well with the people around you. Brandon, um, things are going to kick off here again soon. I've had plenty of your time. Uh, I hate doing this because I never quite know what you're going to say and what I've got to edit out of it. Would you like to finish up with any messages? Bear in mind we have children present. Ah. Uh, just want to come in the camera. Oh, this. Harrison Moses says yeah. nothing up. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything inappropriate today. I want to show people that Brandon Scott can be child friendly, more than child friendly. Spider-Man, Brandon Scott, eat, sleep, box, repeat. Apparently that, people don't think, think apparently that name's not great. Eat, sleep, box, repeat is the best name in history. This is Brandon Scott, a.k.a. Spider-Man, a.k.a. the baddest nerd on the planet. Doey, over and out.